All right, hey everyone. So today I'm just making a video about advice I have for people who want to get into hacking but don't know where to start. So this is my advice for young hackers. Let's just get into it because I hate long intros as well. So I got this email a few days ago. I was really uh, amazed that someone wrote out to me and I was thinking I should make a video about this. So my first and most important piece of advice is you got to start doing shit now. Yeah, don't, don't be like, oh yeah, what should I study? What should I study? What, what do I need to learn first? Like, pick something that you want to do and do it now. When I, when I got started, the motivation for me was I was like 11 years old and I just wanted to hack Minecraft. I wanted to be able to be the best PvP player in Minecraft ever. And I realized that, you know, I'm not a very good um, at video games. So I'm like, okay, I've got to put my big brain to work and I need to learn how to make the best Minecraft hacks ever. So that's what got me started. You have to pick something that you want to do and start doing it like right away. Once you get into this loop of, oh, I want to do this thing, so I need to learn all this other stuff, you want to get into this loop of learning more stuff, getting new ideas, and trying new things. And, and another thing is, is nobody is going to spoon feed you, okay? Like you have to learn how to spoon feed yourself. Um, the most important skill to learn, first of all, is you have to learn how to teach yourself. Um, especially, you know, if you're, in, if you're in high school or college these days, you all hear all the time, like, oh, my teacher doesn't teach me shit. I have to teach myself. And this is an important life skill. You've got to learn how to spoon feed yourself. All right. Number two is uh, people, you know, people ask me all the time. They're like, oh, what books should I read? What books did you read? What, like, what books are a great resource? I'm like, some people, books work for them. Uh, books don't really work for me. I would say that in general, reading, uh, especially if you're just starting out reading, is a lot less valuable than just doing it, right? And, and here's the thing. The great thing about you know, computer science and especially you know, like hacking and security is that you don't need any kind of special equipment to do your job. You know, it's not like electronics or chemistry or biology or physics or engineering. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need a CNC mill, right? I love this picture. This is the setup of the guy who was running the Emotet botnet, which was one of like, you know, the biggest like botnet or crime rings in the world, right? And when they busted this guy, they raided his place, this was his setup. So he was running one of the world's biggest cyber crime rings from this piece of shit setup, right? He, he most certainly does not have a fucking RGB gaming PC or whatever, right? He does, he, he does not have a gaming chair or whatever, right? All you need to get started is just a laptop and internet. So you have no excuse. You got to get on that shit now. Just start doing shit. And so, okay, then, then the question is like, okay, what do I do, right? Because I don't know shit. What, what am I supposed to do? Well, the thing is you got to start small, right? So let's say, okay, you know, people ask me all the time, like, oh, how do I become a hacker like you? Instead of saying hacker like me, okay, imagine the question is, how do I become a carpenter, right? Okay, so if you want to become a carpenter, maybe you first got to, you know, build your shitty little birdhouse, right? You got to build the shitty little birdhouse from the kit. And then maybe after the birdhouse, you're like, oh man, I'm a big guy. I can put up a birdhouse. And then you're going to, maybe you're going to put up like a, like a, you know, shitty little rickety shed out in the backyard, right? You're going to put up like a piece of crap shed. Maybe if a hurricane comes in, it'll blow over. But, but hey, it's a freestanding structure. It's a big, big upgrade from the birdhouse, right? But it's like a, it's like a reasonable progression, right? And then after you put up, you know, the shitty little rickety shed, maybe you're going to take on a big challenge. You're going to upgrade. You're going to challenge yourself. It's like, oh, maybe now I'm going to build an addition to my house, right? And then after you build the addition to the house, you're like, I, I really know how to do shit. Like I know how to make stuff up to code. I know what I'm doing now, right? But it all started with this shitty little bird shed. You need to start small. If you're like, oh, I wanna like hack Facebook, right? I wanna, I wanna get a $50,000 critical bug bounty. That's not gonna happen in like the first year of you doing shit in security. Because other people have been doing bug bounty for like their whole life. You can't expect to have that overnight success. Like Rome wasn't built overnight. You got to start small and you got to be happy with these little small successes. And just to drive the point home, um, when, I, when I started out, I learned how to code by just, you know, making some shitty little Minecraft hacks when I was like, uh, you know, a squeaker in middle school. And the first Minecraft hack that I wrote was a real piece of shit. It had exactly one hack. Um, it looked kind of like this. It was just, a, you know, a sneak hack, uh, no nothing else. And I was so happy with my shitty little sneak hack. I was like, yeah, this is going to be the best hack ever. I'm going to keep adding more hacks to it and stuff like that. So it's kind of like that. And, and this isn't my hack client, right? This is just some example I found on the internet. And then I, I kept going at it, right? And then I added some more hacks, right? So maybe I, I added, oh, I want to make a nuker hack that, you know, breaks all the blocks in a certain radius. So to do that, you know, I had to learn how to write a for loop in 3D space, right? You know, like write some nested for loops. 
And uh, you know, to make the kill aura, I had to write you know the aimbot to aim at the guy when you when you click on them, right? So then to do that, you know, I had to teach myself like the trigonometry to figure out what angle I have to aim at the guy to hit him, right? So for each of these hacks, it just seems like a, a small incremental piece of progress, just adding one new feature to my hack client. But at each step, I'm learning a new skill, right? And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to get into into like that loop that I was talking about earlier, where you get new ideas, you have to learn new stuff to implement them, and you basically learn and apply new knowledge constantly. Or, or, or let's say I'm making Counter-Strike hack, right? You know, a lot of people ask me, how do I get into native reverse engineering? How do I get into binary exploitation? Well, the first thing, you know, I graduated from Minecraft after, after finishing middle school, and now I wanted to hack Counter-Strike, because all my friends play Counter-Strike. So I was like, OK, how do I make a Counter-Strike hack? I, I was literally following a YouTube tutorial on how to write a basic ass, you know, external bunny hop hack, right? I had to figure out a lot of stuff. It was like, OK, I need to figure out how to use Ollie debug or x64 debug. I had to figure out how to use, how to read assembly, how to use Visual Studio and stuff like that. But it's like, OK, after you have that first step, right? It's like now I can, OK, maybe now I want to add an aimbot to it. Maybe now I want to add like a, like a trigger bot to it, right? It's like, OK, maybe I want to make my, my hack be like a DLL. I want to have an internal hack instead of this crappy little external, right? So I'm like, OK, how do I inject my hack? How do I write a DLL injector? Right, so I had to learn that, and then um, you know, let's say, oh, I want to make a create move hook so I can have my hack work not shitty. So then I had to learn how to like, oh, what's a V table? How do I hook a V table and stuff like that, right? But you see that you start with something really small. First, it was just this you know piece of shit little external bunny hop hack. That's all it did. It's just bunny hops, and then I would build up from that until you have something that is you know much more fully featured. So you got to be happy with those small success. You got to start small. All right, number four. You got to focus on your fundamentals. You know, the example I like to use for this is a musician practicing their scales, right? If any of you have ever learned an instrument, I'm sure the teacher is always like, you got to practice your scales. You got to practice your scales. And the reason for that is because scales are like your rudiments. They're fundamental. You can tell when someone is a musician and they haven't really practiced their scales because they'll know like a few songs, but if you tell them to new, learn a new song, it's going to be a huge like ordeal for them, right? Because they've got to grind out every every little you know bar one by one. Whereas if someone you know is very proficient with their fundamentals, their you know their scales, you tell them to learn a new song. A lot of them they can just play it by ear because they've got the scales under their fingers, right? And all those songs are just built up from scales. Uh, a more immediate example here is this. I get this question a lot. It's like, oh, how do I write EAC undetected uh, hack for a game? And, and EAC you know is a very powerful anti cheat. And it, that's some clown shit to me. Because uh, more often than not, it turns out they have like a very poor understanding, you know, of like basic C++ and assembly. That's some clown shit because nobody is going to want to explain to you how to bypass EAC. They can't explain it to you because you don't have like the basic knowledge you need to understand such an explanation. If I want to write a kernel exploit, I need to have a basic understanding of the principles of operating systems. If I want to do bug bounties and you know actually get those big crits. I need to have you know a good understanding of like HTML, JavaScript, and HTTP and stuff like that, and the protocols that are used in web technologies, right? I'm not saying you have to become a C++ expert or an assembly expert or a kernel programming expert. I'm just saying you need to know at least the basics so you're not wasting everyone's time, right? Um, third, uh, or I mean fifth, is online resources. So this goes without saying, you can pretty much learn anything on Google nowadays. But there is a right way and a wrong way. So the wrong way is you go to google.com and you type in, how do I become a hacker? This is not going to get you anywhere. Okay, This is a really bad idea. And I think it's, it should be pretty obvious why. right? Because if you just type in, how do I become a hacker, that's way too broad. What you want is something specific. This is the right way. You look up a specific piece of knowledge or skill that you want to learn. It's like, oh, you, know, you can't just look up, how do I? Hack Facebook. You get it's like you got to start with something like how do I exploit a cross-site scripting? How do I do SQLI, right? And, and, and if you type in these specific skills, like oh, I need to learn how to code in Python. I want to learn how to code in Assembly or C++. You're able to learn how to do all these specific skills and all these specific pieces of information, right? Because Google is not going to teach you how to become a hacker. Because if it was that easy, everyone would, would just be doing it. Like you can learn these specific skills, and it's up to you to put them together to have the skills to be considered you know, a real hacker. Um, next up is you got to make friends. So the journey is going to be a lot easier if you have friends to go along with you. 
And so you basically want to be part of a community. Let's say you want to do game hacks, right? Because that's how I started. Maybe you want to hang out with other people who are in game hacks. I'm not saying those people are like, you know, the nicest people ever or the smartest people, but they are people who are also interested in writing game hacks, right? So that means that you're going to have people to get feedback from or share your ideas with and they'll shit on your ideas or they'll be like, oh, that's really great. Um, so, so two places that you can, you know, find some friends are usually Discord servers and uh, Reddit. You know, back in the day, there's also forums, but forums are kind of basically dead nowadays. And the, and the caveat with this is that, um, you know, a lot of most communities, most people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, so, but you got to find the community uh, that has the people that do know what they're talking about. And you got, you got to find, you got to find the smart people in the community, hang out with them, and just basically ignore all the people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You got to learn to tell who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about versus the people who really know what's going on. You got to skim that top layer, take the cream of the crop from the, the, that group of people and hang out with them. And if you find that you're, you're the smartest person in that group, then you're probably in the wrong group. I would say another really valuable thing is you should find someone who's like probably more experienced than you and you basically got to find a mentor. This is extremely helpful. Um, when I was like 14 and I was just trying to get into um, native reversing and stuff like that, I basically made this one friend and he knew like way more than me and he would always challenge me with new stuff and always shit on my dumb ideas and that's how you learn, right? You sh people shit on your dumb ideas and you learn why they're bad ideas. I would say that having a mentor is a huge asset. They're not going to spoon feed you like I said because nobody wants to spoon feed you. It's a waste of their time and it's also annoying and rude. So, you know, don't ask them for shit that you can find on Google.com, but you can use them for like getting feedback on your work or your ideas, right, occasionally. And uh, I guess another piece of advice I have is you want to avoid people who are, you know, famous or really busy or important because those people usually don't have that much time in their day to dedicate to answering your questions. So, yeah. Okay, so number seven is you got to challenge yourself. This one goes without saying. Okay, let's say you're lifting weights, right? If you keep lifting those tiny weights, you're never going to get stronger, right? You're never going to make progress. You have to eventually, you know, move up to heavier and heavier weights. And similarly, when you're, you know, learning shit, you need to learn how to do more interesting and more challenging shit. It's like you can't, you can keep on making these, you know, shitty little external aimbots forever. But at some point, if you want to actually get good at like, you know, game hacking or reversing or whatever, you got to learn how to make, you know, like an internal hack. You got to learn how to deal with address spaces and hooking and stuff like that. Right? So you got to challenge yourself. You don't keep doing the same shit over and over again just because it's easy. And another, I guess, little side point on this is don't afraid to get your hands dirty. Sometimes if people don't want to do shit for you, you just got to go do that shit yourself. Let's say that, you know, I want, really want to write this hack for this game and there's no existing you know documentation or any info on this game that other people have looked at then you got to go do yourself got to get your hands dirty uh another piece of advice um this one was passed on to me and now i'm passing it on to you it's very valuable basically whenever you approach any problem just assume that it's possible and work off of that assumption just assume that the problem is solvable that there is a solution and the picture here is like, you know, even if the door is closed, maybe there is a window open. Just assume there is a way, right? Concrete example for this. Okay, let's say I want to make a super undetected hack for Counter-Strike. Uh, but, you know, if I'm writing an external hack or even if I'm writing a, you know, internal hack, I need a handle to inject my shit into the game or to mess with the game's memory, right? But since, you know, VAC, it's going to scan for all the handles on the system to the game process, this means that our hack could get detected at any time. So is it impossible to make an undetected hack because we need this handle to the game to mess with it? Well, just assume that it's possible to make an undetected hack. What would we need to be able to fuck with the game without a handle, right? So how can we touch the game's memory if it were possible uh, without a handle, right? So what would be necessary? We just assume that we can do the thing and then we work off that assumption. So, you know, the logical conclusion here is, okay, you know, if we want to fuck with the game's memory without having access to it from user land, then we've got to attack it from the kernel, right? We've got to subvert the kernel. So, you know, let's just hack, you know, Windows kernel and move our hack to the kernel. We're going to make a kernel loader. And, you know, that's another great opportunity to learn because it's like, oh, you know, now I've got to write this kernel loader for my cheat so I can make an undetected hack, right? And now you have an excuse to go learn all about, you know, kernel internals and kernel programming and windows and stuff like that, right? So that's more knowledge. Um, 
And in the worst case, right, you, the worst case is you just totally fail, but at least you learned something new, right? You know, sometimes if you just like go out of your way, it's like, you know, I really want to just do the thing. I don't care if it's hard or I have to, you know, go through some hoops. Usually if you have to go through some hoops, that means you have to learn something. So it, don't be afraid to, you know, get your hands dirty and just go through hoops. Just assume the problem is possible and work off of that. Uh, and here's like, you know, the last point I'm going to make here, number nine, is you just got to do what you got to do. So when I was writing my first compiler, I was learning about compilers, uh, this is around 11th grade, and I really had no idea what the fuck I was doing. So, you know, I went and I picked up a copy of the Dragon Book, the, you know, the textbook on compiler design, the real famous one, and I started thumbing through this shit, and I was like, wow, this shit's really fucking complicated, and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I wish there was a way, I wish there was some resource that would just break that shit down for me. So what I ended up doing is I ended up just, you know, going on Google.com and just stealing random professors' lecture notes, presentation slides, their lecture slides on the various topics in compilers that I was confused about. And, and if you notice here, like there's these super famous universities like Stanford and Harvard and, you know, University of Washington, and there's these lecture notes that you can just like eat for free. So it's like you can just teach yourself just off of some shit that you stole off Google, right? You just got to do what you got to do. This is another example. I needed to read this research paper so I could implement this feature in my compiler. And I'm like, okay, well the paper is paywalled, so how do I get to it? So I go on Google Scholar and I find some like copy of the preprint, or you know, if I, I can't find the preprint on Google Scholar, maybe I'll just go grab that shit off Sci-Hub. Now, I'm not you know, advocating for piracy here, but I, I mean, if you're like a high school student or like a college student, I mean, you have every goddamn right to get access to the educational resources that you deserve, right? No shame. Can't have shame when it comes to this shit. You gotta do what it takes to get the resource that you need. So um, yeah, it's been almost 26 minutes. So summary, uh, basically you just have to start doing shit right away, find a project and start getting into that loop, right? Don't be so focused on like, oh, I need to learn all about C++ and assembly and everything so I can start getting hacking. Like, no, just learn the basics of the you know, fundamentals that you need to get started. And then once you get started, then you can just learn exactly what you need to get to that next you know, increment, that next feature or whatever, right? Uh, when you make progress, you feel successful, you feel motivated to keep going. If you are going to learn all this stuff from this book, then you're never going to have any motivation to keep going because you're going to be like, oh, fuck me, I, today I'm going to go read chapter three to five in this textbook. Like, that's not fun. You're going to have no motivation to keep going. And, uh, you know, don't feel bad if you're like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Basically, everyone has to start out feeling like they don't know what they're doing. And lastly, again, I can't emphasize this enough, is that nobody is going to spoon feed you, okay? People go to college and pay $50,000 a year to get spoon fed. So unless you want to, you know, go to college and pay someone to spoon feed you, you need to learn how to spoon feed yourself. And, you know, in life, learning how to spoon feed yourself is also just a valuable skill because that means you can learn pretty much anything. And that's a huge advantage. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. And, uh, yeah, good luck.